what's up youtube this is aviation king and welcome back to my channel to another video and guess what 23me has informed me that there's been an update on my results and we're gonna check the update in, in a minute so and no further ado let's get started so now we're on the 23me homepage and let's see what my updated composition has to s say and see if there has been any changes Okay, so here it says that I am 98.2% Western Asian and North African. So that has gone up slightly versus the previous version. And then it breaks it down into 62.3% um, Arab, Egyptian and Levantine. So that percentage has stayed the same. And it says that I am 50.2% Levantine. What it says from my Levantine percentages that I'm from Lebanon and Syria so I'm from the Beirut government in Lebanon and the Homs government in Syria so nothing has really changed much apart from the percentage but the regions have stayed the same and then next I am 8% Egyptian which has stayed the same versus the previous version and uh, then our new entry to the ancestry composition is that I am 2.7% Coptic Egyptian and let, let's see what 23andMe has to say about my Coptic Egyptian ancestry. So this is what it says. Kareem, your DNA suggests that 2.7% of your ancestry is Coptic Egyptian. Making up of over 10% of Egypt's population, Copts are a Christian minority who share an ancient history with non-Coptic Egyptians that dates back to before the first pharaohs setting. Today, most Copts live in Egypt or Sudan, but there are also large Coptic communities living in the United States, Australia, and Canada. And it also tells you a bit about the culture as well. And it tells you your relatives with Coptic ancestry. So what it says here is that most probably I had mostly fifth cousins and a fourth cousin who have Coptic Egyptian ancestry. And then it says that I am 1.4% broadly Arab, Egyptian and Levantine. So it basically means unspecified. So they weren't able, they weren't able to pinpoint any uh, regions within that category. Before the update, I was 2.1% broadly Arab, Egyptian, and Levantine, but now I'm 1.4%. So what happened, I think, was that some of that 2.1% from the previous update, so most probably 0.7% of that, um, was replaced with the Coptic Egyptian. And I think what happened to the Levantine is that as my Levantine gone down by 2%, because before the update, I was 52% Levantine, and now I'm only 50%. So most probably some of that 2% went into the Coptic Egyptian. It says that I am 33.5% Northwest Asian. So that has gone up by 0.6%. And then I am 33.5% Iranian, Caucasian, and Mesopotamian. So it says it's primarily located in Iraq, Iran, Eastern Turkey, or Eastern Anatolia, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. Okay. Kareem, your DNA suggests that 33.5% of your ancestry is Iranian, Caucasian, and Mesopotamian. From Armenians and Assyrians to Kartvelians and Persian, the diverse people of Iran, the Caucasus, Eastern Anatolia, and Mesopotamia share an ancient genetic history dating back to some of the world's first farmers. Asian. Today, there are significant Armenian, Iranian, and Assyrian communities around the world, including many in the United States. It also tells you about the culture, which is interesting. And also, it shows me the, uh, how many cousins I have that have the ancestry from that Mesopotamian region. So what it says here is that I've most probably got third cousins and fourth cousins. And it shows that I've got relatives that have roots in eastern Turkey and in Iran. And this percentage has gone up by 1.3% because in the previous... Um, version i was only 32.2 percent iranian caucasian mesopotamian but now it's higher it's 33.5 percent that's a lot quite shocked and then it says that i'm 0 0.8 percent north african which basically is primarily located in libya tunisia algeria and morocco and the western sahara but as you can see that uh, the north african stayed um, the same the percentage didn't change and nothing has really changed much about the North African percentage. 
And then it says that I'm 1.6% broadly Western Asian and North African. Which has basically gone down slightly by 0.2%. Then it says that I am 1.3% European. So it has gone down by 0.5% because before the update I was 1.8% uh, European. So I had more European before they updated this composition. And then it says that I'm 1.3% Southern European, which breaks that down into 0.7% Italian, which basically is primarily located in Italy and Malta. Then I am, this is the one that surprised me, because before the update I was 1% Greek and Balkan, now I'm only 0.6% Greek and Balkan. Next I've got 0.4% Trace Ancestry. Okay, so we detected the following traces of the populations in your DNA. Read more about the trans ancestry in the FAQ. And that basically breaks that down into 0.4% Central Asian. The part of China that it shows doesn't really is, actually make sense because um, there's actually an ethnic group in within um, China that have uh, Turkic origins and Mongol origins. So most probably uh, that's not very surprising because there was a Turkic Mongol empire and a lot of mixing within that region because what I think happened is that some of my ancestors most probably were fought in the war and most probably married somebody from Central Asia. So I think that's why I have a possibility of being from Central Asia. And then it says that I'm 0.1% unassigned, which hasn't really, that's just stayed the same. And that was my updated composition. And now let's see what 23andMe as well has to offer. So if we go to our ancestry timeline, let's see what the history has to say about my family. Okay, so from the fifth, so between the fifth and eighth plus generation, let's see what I had. So first of all, it's saying that I had Italian from seven between seventeen forty and eighteen sixty. So let's see what it has to say. And the part I found very surprising is that the Coptic Egyptian was in the same generation as the Italian. So I don't know if, for example, the Italian married a Coptic Egyptian or what exactly happened within the time, whether he migrated or something. I don't know. Let's see. And as you can see, the major change of the timeline is that the Greek and Balkan generation changed. Before, it was like from the fourth, from like the fifth to the eighth generation. Now it's in the same generation as the Italian and the Coptic Egyptian from the 1740 to the 1860s. And what, what's different about this generation is that before it was in the same generation as the North Africans. So that really didn't make sense before the, when, when, when I had the previous version. But during this updated version, I think that makes a lot more sense because it shows the, it, it shows the migration like hap, happening um, at the same time. So it doesn't go in a zigzag line, it just goes in like a straight line. So I think this is more efficient. So, okay, so from the 5th to the 8th generation, I had some North African. So you most likely had a 2nd great-grandparent, 3rd great-grandparent, 4th great-grandparent, or a 5th great-grandparent who was 100% Egyptian. This person was likely born between 1800 and 1890. So most probably, I think that there was a dude chilling out in Egypt by the River Nile and enjoying the views of the pyramids. And let's see my 11 when it came. Okay, so you most likely had a parent or a grandparent or a great-grandparent who was 100% Levantine. This person was likely born between 1920 and 1980. They had a parent, a grandparent or a great-grandparent who was 100% Iranian, Caucasian and Mesopotamian. This person was likely born between 1920 and 1980. So as you can see in the timeline, they first started in Italy or in Malta. And then they moved to uh, Coptic Egypt, or maybe the a Coptic migrated to Italy and then married my Italian ancestor or something like that. And then maybe they divorced, and then after that they migrated to Greece and the Balkans, and then did some trade in North Africa, which I mean definitely makes sense because between Southern Europe and North Africa they do a lot of sea trade, so that makes sense. So then they migrated to North Africa, and then most probably they crossed by land to Egypt where they spent the most of the time, most of their time. And then after that, they migrated to the Levant, which was the Levant, which is like the Lebanon, Syria, Jordan region. 
and then after that they migrated from the Levant all the way to Iran, the Caucasus, and Mesopotamia, or Eastern Turkey even, as it's mentioning in the map that Eastern Turkey may be in me. So most probably they went from the Levant all the way to Iran, Caucasus, and Mesopotamia. So I think most probably what happened within that time, with, with, between the first and the third generation, is that most probably one of my Levantine ancestors most probably married an Iranian or an Iraqi or a Turkish person in my family. Thing. I think this timeline is way more accurate than the previous version because it actually shows the mi the real migration. It doesn't show that they went in a zigzag line, which is actually, I felt like, which is more reliable when they went from Italy to Greece, then to North Africa, then to Egypt, and then to the Levant, and then to Iran. makes more sense because, they're, because it's following the right route. So now let me tell you the pros and cons of my ancestry report. Pros are that the timeline is accurate and it shows the right route. The 23andMe report definitely, you know, is great because they tell you which regions your ancestors most probably may have come from. And also the thing that I also find reliable is that when you press on your percentage, for example, they will tell you the culture within that percentage and they will give you a bit of an explanation, which is good for me to know. That, for example, that most probably my ancestors, most probably within the Iranian Caucasian Mesopotamian part, most probably fought in a Mon in the Mongol War, which most probably I think is kind of true, because there's been a lot of mixing in the old days. But anyways, I for the thing that I found very happy is that. I didn't know that I had Coptic Egyptian in me because when I was speaking to my relatives about the this percentage. The, they told me that they don't know anyone in their family who was Coptic Egyptian, but when I looked at the timeline, it turns out it's from a long time ago, so that makes sense that nobody knows who was Coptic Egyptian in my family. But now I know that it most probably either was a great-grandma or a great-grandfather who had Coptic Egyptian in them. But when I asked my grandma about the Egyptian percentage, she knew that one of her great-grandparents was uh, Egyptian, and one, one of them was Moroccan, so that would definitely make sense. But nonetheless, I'm very, I'm very happy with my results, and they're, and they look interesting to me to learn. And it's nice always to learn about my heritage, since that's a pas that's my passion. Anyways, everyone, that's it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. Comment down below, and I'll catch you all next time.